not mistaken as well, their series against Blank, they were, I want to say, 0-2 down and started turning it around on Hanamura. I, yep. I, yeah, yeah, so that's the thing. I, I confirm that. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. And, and that's the thing. Uh, that's the possibility right now. Like I said, I think this is the, the exact right place for me to take this to. However, Xavier are not Blank. And that's the thing, Xavier like Attack Hanamura just as much as Mega do. So, I mean, this could be the point where Xavier do just kind of tip it over the edge and put themselves in a situation where I believe they end up finishing second. I mean, Xavier not being blank also means Xavier might just not beat Mega as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, cause yeah, Mega, yeah. Because blank beat Mega, so at the end I mean, of the day. I mean, that's what you would expect. Certainly. I, I mean, that's certainly what we expected coming into this. You know, close or no, we did expect a Mega win. But like I said, the situation we're in, Xavier at match point. Mega here on the defense first. So once again, Xavier are actually opting into attacking first like they did on Hollywood. And uh, this is indeed a double sniper. So now look for Pruno's positioning because he was uh, pretty far onto that right side. He's got to be very careful. He doesn't get locked out of the point altogether, but he is going up against two snipers. So also got to be yeah. very careful to protect his own life. And you can already see Mega have just kind of been cornered around off to the side, having to find a re-entry and Xavier using that opportunity to get on the point. The contest is there, but Xavier so set up. Look at all this. They've got members all around the situation. Apudo on the high ground should be the swing point for Mega, but he's finding it hard to get the angles inward. And Azalea has got a similar spot of high ground in his own right. Kills do start to come through the way of Mega, but they're not out of the water just yet. Saiyajin God gets d -maxed and. Uh, Xavier still a presence here. Queen finally dropping down. Ends it in R and Apudo though, both still in the fight. Should be able to get work done. And indeed, the Pulse Bombs connects to Tay. This should be the remainder of Xavier backing off with just that one third. And now you're starting to see why two snipers sometimes isn't very effective, particularly with the Hanzo here as well. We're not seeing enough damage. We're not seeing enough kills. And what small damage and small kills they are managing to squeak out, Mega are returning and then some as well. Enzuna and Apudo getting far more consistent damage. The tanks as well being in the, on the end. Action and for both THK and Azalea, kind of taking a back seat, and that's cost them. And that means they're instantly going to swap off that Hanzo. Even though he was nearly at the Dragon Strike, swapping onto the Genji, I do like that. I think that's very disciplined here. And I think that's them recognizing they're going to have to go for a harder dive. They can't just, you know, take the slow and steady approach and get those picks, but getting forced back a little bit off the top, they need to just lick their wounds for a moment. It buys more time for Mega to get set up. And Mega coming up to crucial ultimates as well. Like they're coming into a lot of ultimates. The first one already on the Yeah, straight in. Loco goes in with that nano boost. Very good use of that ultimate. Like I said, it gave Mega that extra time to get ready, get set up, have Loco in position to make that dive with the nano boost, and it pays off. And the other thing is for Xavier Esports, because they changed two of their players Ooh, onto new heroes, CH we're also still waiting for those two new ultimates to come on through. That's going to take quite some time. Now, Xavier, they have some good defensive options, but they don't quite have the firepower to punch on through Mega's defensive options, of which they have as well. I mean, that, that's a rough death on THK, you've got to say. It, 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 I mean, Xavier were just about ready to go as well when that one came through, but they are at full fighting force once again. Looking to get the setup. Stick, though, on the rotation, drops two. That's, you know, double for your money. Queen popped the Primal Rage. Tay popped the Transcendence to get out of there, and he just goes down. If you're going to die, you'd rather just die without using the ultimate, and he may just be switching off, but... That was rough for Xavier and super cheap for Mega. You're seeing more swap offs now for Xavier as well. Like sort of like you mentioned, they went 107. We're not seeing these new ultimates come on through. THK and Azalea have been on this Tracer Genji for some time now, but yet we have not seen these ultimates come in. Apudo sitting on this visor looking to clean up. Yeah, this time Xavier just gonna go down the front. They don't wanna get caught in rotation, but what that means is they instead just get caught barreling right in front ways. Again, cheap fights, cheap wins for Mega here. Couple of trades back, but Loco realistically has this one on lockdown. Olivier is gonna pop a self-destruct so that he can, oh no, he's gonna take nope. a dive instead. Not even re there. That's a little unfortunate. That was unfortunately a 100% waste of an ultimate because there's not even an argument for, uh, you know, just not wanting to get staggered or anything. He could have just jumped off the cliff. So yeah. that one is just going to get flushed right down the toilet. Mega, base of those cheaper fights, are still onto five ultimates. They just haven't been less than five. Again, they have to charge right in. And again, THK gets dropped in the rotation by the Pulse Bomb. They do at least get Dreamer on the point, but he's not going to last long there with the Nano Visor coming in. 
and suddenly Xavier having finally Shut got down. on the point started finding themselves wanting to full retreat but not being able to do so and that means that a little bit over the one third 45 percent is all they'll get of that first point this should be where mega even up the score and this is a big turnaround as well we're looking at the other side of the coin completely right now this has been a huge 180 turn i want to say for both teams specifically though mega's defense was airtight nothing got through there they barely let that one third through and that's the only thing that xavier can sort of work with now that is the yeah. only silver lining they have they were caught in a compositional trap they were caught in compositional catch-up and they couldn't find the right comp to make it work they couldn't find the right opening or the kills or anything mega on the other hand i mean what i've been saying so far about not quite reading xavier's plays and all that is uh at least right now not a factor their read has been almost immaculate always ready for whatever it is xavier are planning on the setup and you saw how many times they were getting caught in the rotation we saw that beautiful one as they were weaving into a building on the side and ended and i got two with the pulse bomb from there it's just a whitewash this is mega looking a little bit more like themselves now so, so mega understanding and predicting correctly right because xavier could have also chosen to rotate the other direction if xavier from their perspective went left enzana would have been in the wrong place with the pulse bomb would have had to find a different interception himself but for mega because they read correctly which way they believed that xavier was going to go they had the right setups they had the right plays they executed correctly and they're so far ahead but they got to make it count xavier there's still two maps up xavier could still complete the upset they still could make this a three and zero on this map by holding mega out fully. yeah that's the thing we've got to consider they can actually still full hold here as well it's definitely not in any way shape or form out of the question however after that defense from mega it is on xavier to step it up a little bit further again it's possible we need to see it happen now if they want to clinch the series otherwise they do go to that map four this first fight is going to be very very important for both teams here getting a very early advantage is going to be uh, one of the factors that kind of just dictates everything. Also, just check out the ultimate charge of both the Prudor and Zalia. This has been a deciding factor for Queen. <laughs> the dive once again. THK already set up. Queen so quick on the coordination. The sort of one-two punch between these two is phenomenal. Olivier does get D-Max right at the end, which is a little bit of a shame for them. Saijin God's actually going to be able to get back in here. So there's a window here for Mega. Uh, window also closes very quickly when Dreamer gets the coalescence and when that yep. happens we're right back onto Hollywood. This starts to look like that Hollywood A defense all the way again for Xavier where Dreamer gets the first ultimate of the game. It ends up being incredibly impactful and that gives them another fight win. You see Olivier finally getting back in the mech just as Mega start going in onto the point. So now Xavier should be able to push back. Indeed they do. That is, I mean, how many times have we seen that now where Olivier has got back in the mech and instantly got something, uh, with those missiles specifically, in fact. But again, it's just that dive coordination out of Xavier right now. When they've got all the tools, they're using them to great effect. And they're going to have more tools to use to great effect very soon as well. There's ultimates I've been talking about coming online now, nearly onto the full six as well. Mega, still just kind of waiting here, still just trying to find openings. They at least now get a little bit of pressure off. They eat the pulse bomb away. And uh, unfortunately, Loco has yeah. to eat that with his face, yeah, but they at least get bar. rid of it. Funnily enough, though, that does translate into ultimate charge for Yacht and Rocket for healing him back up. And oh, instant dive into Azalea means no Dragon Blade. Apudo, on the other hand, does have his. Trying to chew through the sound barrier and... Oh, the Coalescence, not going to be possible. Yacht's also down on the backside of it as well. That sound barrier from Tay so clutch as it turns out. A couple of trades still coming back in for Mega, and NZNR has had a lot of free reign with THK dead. They're waiting on Azalea to rejoin the fight. Queen and Olivier having to pop the ultimates to stall out for those DPSs, and they need to convert kills while that's all happening. One for one, two for one, not good enough here for Xavier. The trade backs though, they're still not done. Apudo needs to get picks though here. That being said, None of that translated into point progress for Mega for how long that fight went on for. And now they're running out of time to get any sort of progress. That Azalea death that happened earlier on that prevented the Dragon Blade from coming through. The rest of Xavier were clutch enough to make sure they didn't lose anything despite not having that Dragon Blade. Oh, man. Way. Now they get to use, but they've lost two oh, members. Right. Yeah, suddenly uh, Mega just getting those those cute picks on the side while Xavier still weren't quite ready to go. This should be the conversion now for Mega. Popping out Olivier's mech, closing him out as well. Azalea too late in on the Dragon Blade and now dead as well. That's the push through for Mega. And it looked like it kind of came out of nowhere. Suddenly, they just got a couple of picks, having uh, really been 
kept down by Xavier the entire time before that. And now, like I said, now if it happens here for Xavier, it's going to have to be on that fourth map. And at best, it's a 3-1. At the same time, though, when you look at that defense, there was that second and last defense from Xavier where they had to use a lot of ultimates. Because they lost the Dragon Blade, they had to use the Coalescence on top of the Sound Barrier. And that was necessary to make sure that the Fudo wasn't going to get value out of his own Dragon Blade, which yeah. ended up being the case. But man, they had to commit so much into that defense. By the time they were set up again, they needed to make a Dragon Blade out of Azalea work, but did not expect the two two very early deaths on their team. And for Mega, that's an easy six versus four, even against the Blade. I mean, I want to make a, a bit of a comment here as well on Azalea as a whole. When he's actually pulled out the Dragon Blade at the right kind of times, we saw this a lot on Nepal, he is getting so much out of it. He's playing a phenomenal Genji, but a lot of the time across these last two maps, even on Hollywood where actually they won, we are seeing him often die with it up not quite being able to commit it at the you know in time or at the right time and a lot of that is because the quote unquote ideal time has come like just after he's died that is good proactivity out of mega but then also there are times where he's committing it you know a little bit too late you know where where there was an earlier opportunity to perhaps commit it diva cosplayers in the audience is it diva day no that was that was uh few weeks ago it is a it is a particular hero's day no, it is diva day there we go so uh um but <laughs> as i was actually saying about azalea uh, yeah we are seeing him sometimes just pull them out a little bit later than would be ideal as well where maybe it becomes more worthwhile to hold on to it for the next fight we're seeing him get that mileage less and less and less as the series goes on. Oh, well, we're starting to see now as well, sometimes you don't have that choice, and that was the final fight where unfortunately it didn't pan out. Another opportunity though for both teams going on to Dorado this time around. And it's time to see if Mega can complete maybe what is to be the comeback, the reverse sweep, but so close. Xavier, they've been on match point all on Hanamura. They're still currently on match point. They can still collect this three and one. You're starting to see and you're starting to feel like that Mega are getting some momentum behind them, especially with that win on Hanamura that looked a lot more convincing. This is a situation now for Mega, like we said, as they did against Blank, to uh, even it up, push it to the game five. Against Blank, they unfortunately didn't quite get it all the way. But against Xavier, you would expect that they could. Certainly, you know, a second place team playing the third place team, that is, you know, by rights, what should happen. That's how that matchup should go. But of course, they're only second and third by merit of having not played each other, right? Like, that's the thing. If Xavier win, then actually it turns out, hey, they were the second place team all along. Mega just hadn't played them yet. And by the way, this is now almost the repeat of the Xavier curse. Xavier are the team that so far have had the most, uh, I believe the most best of five, the full best of fives where they're about 2-0 up and then they start losing <laughs> yeah. two matches. This has happened before. Point. They've been in the scenario. They keep having this repeating time and time again. Xavier, they just fail to close it out when it's 2-0 and zero up. They can't collect a 3-0. and zero. And I mean, I, you wonder if that's an assault problem specifically, but at the same time, they're not closing out on the escort afterwards. It's, it's more than just the one, but it is a recurring thing. You're quite right. However, it doesn't mean it's happened yet. It doesn't mean it's come to pass yet. And that does mean that Xavier and kind of change the script on that one. This could be their opportunity to break that, to shake that curse. And out the gate on the attack is Xavier, already dislodging Mega from that early setup and no headshots for Pudo just yet. But it's gonna have to fall a little bit further back now as well. All of Mega kind of giving up that high ground positioning to go back and towards the archway. Xavier kind of uh, moving past that early pressure quite nicely. Incidar sitting up on the back this line though nice. would suggest that Mega still want to make this dive happen. They want to make it happen though, they've kind of got to go now. THK's low, this should be their opportunity. Azalea as well. Pudo, he doesn't get the picks, but the sight lines have paid off for him. He's got the damage out and Xavier have had to pull back for now. The oh. sight coming online very soon to spot where the next push from Xavier is going to come from. Most importantly, Pudo needs to make sure he's not going to get flanked by Azalea onto the back wall. So for now, Xavier going to look for their re-approach, but they are leading that timer off themselves. Ooh, D-Mech for Olivier, that, that just really neuters the dive and you already see that reflected in Azalea, unfortunately going down and then uh, Mega just looking relatively stable here, Xavier still trying to make something happen between THK and Queen, but they are respecting the damage as well, they know they can't stick around for too long, they've converted it into some good payload progress though, 
Mega kind of pulling back a bit. They actually need to commit. Coming in a little late here. Yuck does not quite save Loco, nor does he save Rocket. They just gave Xavier space to play with, and Xavier taking it can suddenly start getting themselves underweight, where Mega had been keeping a lid on them so well up until then. And Mega, once again, just on that sort of A point. Hanamura as the only exception here, but they're just failing to stop Xavier in those sort of final moments. Now the momentum push, the momentum change. Look at the ultimates coming online for Xavier that are already rather online. You can expect yeah. a lot of pressure now onto the Mega backline. You can expect a lot of pressure onto Mega overall. As this the card is, does make its way. Yeah, this is exactly where I'm expecting Azalea to get mileage out of that Dragon Blade. He's got a lot of vertical space to play with. He's got some great targets on the side of Mega to dive onto as well. He should be able, if he can get the angle in, to basically one-handedly open up this fight. He does need to respect some of the defensive tools out of Mega, but he also wants to go well in advance of Yuck getting something up. Oh, but there's the opener. Sage and God has to self-destruct. He catches THK, actually. Olivier not really getting anything in his own right. This is where Azalea needs to go if he's going to go at all. But now is maybe the point where he has to hold on to it. With Queen dead, Tay as well. Azalea gets low and smartly does back off along with Dreamer, who actually may not quite get out with his life. Nope. He will not, plus a stagger on Olivier. Mega do hold out on the defense. This has been kind of a half commit out of Xavier, right? Because they kind of half went in with some ultimates. The transcendence notably was used in that last attack, and now they're going to sort of just re approach the scenario kind of uh, back to square one a little bit because they lose the sort of massive, massive run of ultimates that they had. They used to have four ultimates, now only having two. THK is going to find it somewhat difficult to out Sniper Pluto while the Infrasight is up. That being said, they still have that Dragon Blade. They also have Queen with the Primal Rage, so he should be relatively safe on the oh, dive. Really? Now it's close. I was gonna say, provided no one gets picked, and there he is, straight in, but the pick does come in on Tay. Now, Azalea, not really sure what he's looking for, dives in onto the tanks instead. Wasn't able to get any of the squishies. They have popped out, but Azalea in a bit of trouble. However, the tanks of the side of Xavier are getting the work done as THK even pops his counterpart. This is Xavier getting themselves underway. Ends it, and now that's a cute trade back on Azalea, but I mean, Azalea had kind of already done his job in a sense. He'd already uh, drawn aggro, really. Uh, Mega put a lot into killing Azalea, only just getting him after so many members had died to the tanks. Well, that's the thing, right? Because Azalea might have failed, but into the, not into the, but Yut and Loco still somehow went down. Mega, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't sort of translate stopping Azalea onto some kills for themselves. Can't making its way through the archway now. Apudo at least gets THK. Might expect a quick freeze though from Dreamer. Just seeing that slow progress, self-destruct forward from Olivier to create the space for them to fight in, but they end up actually backing off instead. So that's really just another resource used. Yeah, the cart still just barely making its way through. Two minutes is a decent amount of time to work with for this final section. So Valkyrie does finally come on out. Queen's low already. May have to pop that Primal Rage early. No, they're able to keep him up. Tay does want to commit that Transcendence at a nice and ideal time. Mega though, they're gonna find themselves with some deeper pockets here as the fight drags on longer. And now as they get the conversion of Olivier's mech, starting to get the pressure out. Need to respect the Xenia's Dragon Blade though, but with THK dead, Olivier as well as Azalea definitely should hold on to this. Also, super late transcendence from Tay. Didn't really pull enough weight from the team, and they just, oh, late death on Azalea, that's rough. The thing is, Azalea spent so long chasing after Apudo, not only did he not kill Apudo, not only that, but Puda also got himself a kill onto THK in the middle of all of the chasing. So for Xavier, they couldn't quite close out on the one kill that Azalea wanted. And he had a blade by the way, so you kind of expected the kill to come out of Puda, then instantly the blade to follow up on the rest of the members of Mega. Nothing really went right for Xavier, unfortunately. Now they are starting to really run out of time. Yeah, and uh, that was with a lot of resources committed as well. Xavier, where they were finding great openings earlier, not anymore, and getting caught in the rotation. The support's dead. They have to reset quickly. They cannot afford to get wiped and staggered, but that is exactly what is happening. That's even more ultimate charge back the way of Mega. Really just for those few that didn't have ultimates already at the top of their fight. Xavier now hard on the back foot. We're starting to see Mega pick it up really quickly now. Five ultimates in their favor, 37 seconds remaining for Xavier Esports. There's very little ways for Xavier to win now. Mega would have to misfire completely and miss all of their ultimates. And Xavier, especially for Azalea, this has to be the dream blade. This has to be the one that wins the game. And Rocket and Yuck, they have to not counter it. That's the thing, there are all these tools to stop it. And even when those tools haven't been there, Azalea hasn't got that mileage. Pulse Bomb does go wide from NZNR. It's the first of many ultimates withstood, at least for now. Loco 
Primal Rage doesn't really get much done. Sage and God now the self destruct again. One they need to survive. Not everyone lives. They get Dreamer, and those defensive ultimates are still there in case Azalea wants to pull out the blade. If he's ever going to do it, it's got to be now. He's just got to do it anyway. Olivier self destruct will not be able to remech. That was so close. The timing there, Azalea. He's got one. He waited out those support ultimates, but where's the kills? No, Loco's got him. Did not get the Dream Blade. Did not get the 5k, and they will not get the payload back underway. That is the farthest Xavier will get here. 77.87 meters, and now the stage is set for Mega to take us to a game five. And this is where it gets really, really uh, unfortunate for a team like Xavier. This is where they got to start to feel that pressure. This is where they got to start to feel like maybe the tide has turned, maybe it has shifted in Mega's favor because it's getting more and more clear that Mega have taken control of this game. That B was fairly comprehensive. The only slip up that Mega have to really look at is what happened on A. Yeah. They let A go away reasonably easily, just slipping right through their fingers. And we've seen this already onto Hollywood. This time around though, Mega, they don't let the cart go all the way on C. Let's check out this quick replay as well. Look, Apuro yeah, managing to kill THK with a headshot while Azalea was trying to get him down. So again, big yeah, failures that's, on that's that. That's something else, right? But I mean, that's Budo for you. But you make a good point as well that, that um, Hiccup, shall we call it, on A, and I think that was just, you know, Mega, they started to get a handle on how Xavier play, and, you know, keeping a bottle on the aggression, not giving them any quarter, not giving them any room to play with, and then slipping up just that one time, going, nope, okay, if we do make that slip up, they will capitalize on it, and then they didn't make the slip up since. I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and just say it was a bit of a slip from Mega that's a one-off. So now for Mega, though, their own attack, and their own attack so far has been... A little bit tricky, right, because you go back onto Hollywood, this is where they did not complete Hollywood because the attack could not finish B. You go onto Hanamura, it still took them some amount of time to get 44 point something percent capped out on that A cap, so it hasn't been the smoothest of attacks, all things considered. Now going into Dorado, first of all, they're going to get past A and that was already hard on Hanamura. Second of all, they never made it past B on Hollywood and they have to kind of do that now on Dorado. That's the thing, you know, once again here, it is totally possible for Xavier to just kind of fully hold out somewhere in this courtyard. And they are playing the right kind of game, this advanced set up here. Ooh, shots on Loco, it's going to be just fine. It's just a flesh wound, buddy. <laughs> it is but a flesh wound. Uh, he's re he already regrown that arm. He's, he's doing fine. That's uh, that's a commit though out of Xavier. It's gonna totally pay off here. Apudo just dealt with. That was not what Mega were looking for. Trying to open up the space, and now Xavier can just kind of counter dive back in. The card did continue moving though. So for what Xavier have done, they are gonna win this fight 100%, and they're not gonna fully push Mega out. You have to respect the respawn yeah. distance that Mega have to work with. So. If Xavier kind of overstep, Mega should be able to come in and punish the card is already in the archway. And I do like that discipline out of Xavier. It really was just, uh, you know, a well reacted to dive. Now they need to not give Mega too much space to play with. They need to again be able to counter dive successfully. Taze dead though. And Dreamer, where's that counter dive? Apudo's going off right now. Olivier is getting some back, but these Mega members are just not low enough for anything to stick. Xavier gonna have to give up the courtyard. And there is a possibility for Xavier to come back in and trying to see where their respawners are. They're still reasonably far away, so it doesn't look like they'll make yeah, it back choosing in time. Not to. What they are gonna have now is this B point set up on the high ground. Mega have to look to see if they can break this one down, but they are behind in ultimates. Apuro, for one of the first times in the Genji versus Genji matchup, is actually behind his alien in charge. But what they do have is time. About five whole minutes coming into this, getting the Mech on Saiyajin God as well. They are gearing up to get ready to go. They can still just break it open with what few ultimates they have. Ends in an R trying to sort of weave in on the back side. Realizes that he's not as safe as he thought he was. Good eat on the pulse bomb by Olivier. And Mega just slowly making cart progress, but not really getting the space they need. Right now, we're going to see Azalea maybe pull out this Dragon Blade. He's got so much support to do it with as well. Valkyrie and Transcendence. It's going to be Apudo first, though. Yeah, and this is the proactivity. Apudo, who doesn't get too much for it, though, is just 
kind of been handled already by Xavier having to commit those support ultimates. And now it may just be Azalea's turn to do the same. Tay's dead though at the very back end of that. That's a little Gonna rough. Be yeah, Dreamer has to commit that one. So the issue now for Xavier is they had to use double support ultimates, which cannot defend against his next push effectively. Azalea is smart to actually hold on to the Dragon Blade. Yeah. Xavier, they need win conditions. They need something to stop this cart, which by the way, has pushed up so fast. Mika can get this in one push. Yeah, Xavier had all their members up by the way. Tay also got a kill on NZNR. They had a bit of an opportunity there that they just kind of let slide. In fact, they were so concerned with regrouping, they gave up space too, but now Azalea can finally go in with this blade. Yutz there with the transcendent, so Azalea, if he can just survive through this one, but he's so low. Mega know that he wants to pull it out, and he's not going to get a chance. Spending too much time loitering on the backside, and now Xavier just slowly getting picked apart here. Olivier going to be demacked almost as quickly as he got back in the mech. And now Xavier just slowly routed out now. Queen dead. Azalea is going to have to get that dream blade that he has so far failed to get. But at least this time around, there's not going to be double defensive ultimates coming out from Mega. And the there goes. to stall up a little bit of time. Where's Where Azalea? Azalea? He could be committing it, but he waited out for self-destruct first. Now the transcendence from Tay has run out and he's dead. Tay's dead too. And it all falls apart for Xavier. How many times is Azalea not going to pull out the blade? over-respecting some of these ultimates out of Mega, getting next to nothing, compare and contrast to the 3k Apudo just got Mega deservedly tying up the series. At the same time, though, you have to say, it's not entirely fair to say he was too respectful. He needed to make sure he waited out the transcendence. He needed to make sure he waited out the sound barrier. And the other one, that was probably the one that's a little bit more questionable. He could have probably have outpositioned the self-destruct either way, though. It was more coming down to Mega identifying what Xavier needed to do the win yeah. and countering it out effectively now. For Xavier, they had a few more opportunities than that. They had a pretty clean initial fight win on B, but could not translate that into additional fight wins on that B defense. And most importantly, they actually didn't get that much cart stoppage because if the cart had stopped, we would not have seen the cart go to the second, yeah. to the archway onto B. And then Xavier might have had an extra opportunity to get another fight. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like those situations were all times where Mega was just you know, unequivocally winning. In fact, a lot of the time it was, you know, maybe one thing here or there and a couple of trade bags, but the movement was happening. And that's the thing, like you, like you said, it, it never ended up happening on the cart for Xavier. They never actually stopped up the cart. They never put Mega in a position where they had to go all in and actually use maybe some of those defensive ultimates that they were trying to save to counter out Azalea. They never put Mega in that position. So I think you're, you're dead right there that Mega were recognizing what Xavier needed to do to win and shutting it down. Xavier... They weren't really doing the same to Mega. They were just kind of letting it happen. They they were after a certain time, I think. And, you know, for the Xavier side, at least the first blade, when Apudo first bladed out, you did, in fact, see the support ultimates being used. You saw Xavier holding onto his own blade, knowing that they were going to win with those resources and then coming back in with the, with the blade later on. But uh, it's that second part that didn't quite happen for Xavier. The first part, successful. That's why they got their first defense. Mm -hmm. But, uh, again, they needed to translate that into further fight wins on the defense and more specifically to then also hold the card. And that's the thing. I mean, that first fight when was really just reacting well to Mega's dive. I, I mean, it was good. I don't want to discredit what happened there, but it's not like Xavier did a whole lot proactively throughout a lot of that defense, unfortunately. And it was that very proactivity that was actually profiting them so well on Nepal and Numbani both. And it's, it's, it's a bit of a two-sided thing. They've kind of drawn back a little bit on that, and Mega are also kind of handling it better when it is coming out. And I almost feel like Xavier are getting too scared to be as proactive again. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I, I mean, I think they're still being reasonably proactive, but it's also that Mega now has really started to come into their own as well. We saw Mega being the mm. ones falling behind, having a case with Xavier, especially on Nepal, I think was the biggest example where Nepal... They were just, and they being Xavier in this case, just kind of running away with the game, setting the tempo of it, and forcing, um, forcing Mega to be the ones to constantly have to respond. So Mega kind of retaking that tempo a little bit, which is why we're going to get that nice two and two going into map mm -hmm. number five. It was fated to be this way, yeah, because it's of course Mega, <laughs> the team that has to lose the first two maps. Yep. Xavier, the team that has to win the first two maps, and then the opposite happening both ways round. Yeah, and that does mean that finally on game five, one of those two traditions will be broken. We've seen a lot of full fives out of Mega. Interestingly enough, I think you may be correct, Xavier, even if they win here, 
I'll need to double check exactly how. 3 2. I did check 3, three two, 2 and 3 2 is three not two. enough to get. Yeah, so. They needed at least a 3 1. Yeah, so there you have it. it. It wouldn't quite be enough to actually put them in second place. However, it would still be a win. And that's the thing. You may not finish second place, but you've still got to consider you did actually beat the team yeah. that did finish second place. You know, you can kind of feel uh, an, an amount of, uh, of honorary second, and that actually does account for a lot, right? The placements matter going into playoffs because that determines who you play on the other side of the bracket. But let's get real. Skill always matters more. When you're actually playing the match, doesn't matter who you're up against, whether you're, you know, the fourth place playing the first place or the second playing the third, doesn't matter. If you're better than the other team, that's what matters. If you end up finishing as the third place seed, but you were good enough to have potentially been second, then hey, that's the caliber of play you bring into playoffs. And that could actually even potentially be a good thing here for Xavier. And that's the thing, right, for a team like Xavier. And by the way, heading straight into Oasis, which is the tiebreaker. Um, a team like Xavier, right, if they do manage to beat Mega despite losing out on the tiebreaker score, what that does say is maybe they have what it takes to beat Hong Kong Attitude, who looks like they're going to finish numbers two in Group A, who uh, Xavier will be playing as a third place team coming into Group B if, uh, more reasonably right now, if that has been locked in based on that score. So beating Mega would allow them to feel very confident going up against Hong Kong. Even a close loss, I will also, I will, I will concede. Even a close loss, because again, you've got to consider that is what Mega got against Blank. And we looked at that and went, okay, this kind of establishes Mega as a pretty prime threat coming into playoffs as well. And I think if Xavier get even a close loss here, then we've kind of got to extend that same property to them and say, hey, there's a third team in this group that the teams in Group A have to be afraid of. But it is on a way since that they're going to have to get it over the line, if at all. And we do know how great a, a Mega themselves can be on this map. And well, can Mega do what they could not do the other evening against Blank? Can Apudo yeah. do what he could not do against Blank with this McCree? Shut down Xavier Esports. Oh, Loco. Oh, he's down. And just a little bit too deep, a little bit too early. Now, Saiyajin God as well. These tanks just... You know, milliseconds of misstep between them. Not quite tight. Oh, but Apudo biting back. They did actually get a few. They're trading pretty even here, all things considered. And Apudo is actually coming up on a dead eye. They've still got resources to fight with here, and they're certainly not done, especially not with the respawns coming in. And actually, having only just gone the way of Xavier, initially it's going to go back the way of Mega now. Big point to consider as well, Mega and Apuda did so much damage, A, he took up both the supports, but secondly, he forced Olivier down the hole into the middle with Olivier yeah. gone for the time being, Mega just walking through with their own tanks, threatening, in fact, already having taken this point back. Yeah, THK just trying to catch Apuda on the drive-by, they've got the dive in on Yacht, the trade back now, they've kept Olivier up though, that's the coalescence really getting put to work, and Azalea even getting one, that's the, going back the way of Xavier. This, this boy's just gonna flip-flop all game long. Oh, Xavier down mid-Dragon Blade, but Xavier still getting kills in through that should be able to stabilize that hold. And flip-flop sounds about right. 21 to 21, Ooh. it's been back and forth extremely quickly for both teams so far. Still waiting to see when the Stenai will come out. Still waiting to see when Mega will make their next strike. Waiting for Rocket to come back in, and he's right. Guess what time it is. Olivier does have to throw out the self-destruct first though. And the catch on Apudo, so no, everyone's watches have to get stopped for a moment at 11.59. And that's going to be another hold out here, I think, from Xavier. No, Mega not quite done in this one. The res on Apudo means he gets back into the fray, back into the thick of it, and ends it in our catching Azalea as well. These low, low members on Xavier can't quite stay in the fight any longer. And Apudo now getting to run rampant, just getting headshot after headshot. Late coalescence from Dreamer, not enough to save Olivier's mech, and that means the point should oh. be going... Oh, oh. Beautiful from Apudo. Should be going back the way of Mega now. And THK has done uh, a decent amount of work trying to shut down Apudo this game. And by shut down, it's not necessarily killing him, but also just wasting his time. A few times we've seen THK on the back line harassing Apudo, forcing him to turn around, but mostly he survived. And once he got that Apudo, the pulse bomb on through Apudo, but this time Apudo catches him out. Mega can claim that point capture, but they are now significantly, or at least far more significantly, behind on uh, objective time. Mega getting very proactive and it pays off. However, they lose both their supports in the mix. So, a little bit precarious. They lose a Fudo as well, but I think they maybe just got enough kills through Sage and God's self-destruct as well to at least keep the space secure while Mega's respawners start coming in. But Olivier is not done. He wants to commit his, and they're actually on the point. Mega, they have to commit even more to keep the point in control of them, but it is paying off, crucially, Olivier. 
Olivier D next. They should be able to pressure him out alongside Queen here and Xavier. Still yet to find another entryway to this point. Omega now have overtaken Xavier's advantage on the percentage point. Xavier looking for some ults. Azalea, can he get a better Dragon Blade than the previous one where he was shut down by Loco? Still waiting to see a Deadeye out of Mega. And Apuda's just kind of holding that one against Xavier, threatening to use it against Xavier. Yeah, it's been, kind of a, rotation now. it's been another 24 hours as far as Apuda is concerned. Yeah, Azalea's just looking for the... Uh, Looking for the flank here. Does have to respect the flashbang at all times, though. Also needs to really pick his moment. We can't wait too long because we're about to head into the 99% overtime. Got to go. There's the dive trying to get right on top of Apudo. They do catch Loco in their dive as well as they commit all those defensive resources. They get the point cap in the mix too. And Mega, they're actually not going to be finished here. They want to keep the fight going. That could be dangerous. They don't control the point. The high noon goes wide. And now Azalea, the red carpet's been rolled out. He need only walk it. If it's going to ever happen, it's got to be now because Apudo's still going to work. It goes down though, but so has Azalea. Mega, they've got so few members left, but the same is true for Xavier. And NZNR is still in this. He's still scrapping and brawling. Finally goes down to THK. And Xavier, if they can deal with Sage and God, doesn't look like they can. Mega are back on it. Mega now 99% of Xavier couldn't even force the overtime themselves. Apuro is back into the Queen's fight dead. almost finally as well. The response for Mega, those tanks coming back up because they went down so early, ended up being exactly what they've needed. And a style point flashbang catch on Dreamer at the very end of Pudo, showing his caliber here as a DPS. And Azalea just could not catch a break this entire game as the Genji. First time running in, gets shut down by Loco, then trying to get in again. The Dragon Blade directly diving on through Pudo does kill Apuru, but not before the flashbang can leave Apuru's hand. The flashbang catches Azalea. The rest of Mega's teammates then get the kill into Azalea before the Dragon Blade can get anyone else. I mean, absolutely beautiful on the whole. That's really just... I mean, that's not even on Azalea at that point. That's just how good Apuru is. Like, you, you can't look at that and go, like, man, yeah, Azalea just not getting it off. But, again, it is also an aspect of Mega recognizing what Xavier need to win. Azalea now, blast from the past. Sword on the first map of the day, and uh, this may well be the last map of the day as well. If they don't pick up the win here, it's going to be the Pharah. And it's going to be a Pruto still onto the McCree, and this is kind of what needs to happen for Mega, who so far have been unwilling to run their own Pharah. Maybe it's not within the hero pool of this team, but currently it doesn't need to be as long as a Pruto can shut down Azalea, who kind of playing a oh. very risky game directly into the far against the McCree. Yeah, Queen already dead. I mean, this this McCree is just paying off right now for Xavier. The extra headshot damage that they get out of the McCree, and then the follow-up dive, but they haven't quite capitalized on it, and the spam damage from Azalea, again, has started to work for them. They've got Saiyaj and God as well. They just get all these members low. You saw there was a great couple of rockets that got all of them ducking for cover, and now they're just keeping Mega bottled up onto the side of Xavier. Queen's back in the mix already. Ready. They're looking to get set up around this point. But this is where Xavier can be somewhat successful, right? Because they're now catching Mega into this corner, forcing Mega away from the cap itself. This is where Azalea gets a lot of damage done, and this is where Pluto cannot find the angle to actually challenge Azalea. This is now Xavier identifying, yes, a Pluto can counter us, but actually through positioning, we can keep him bottled up. He's coming back in now once again with that Deadeye, which can zone Azalea, but you also expect Olivier to just kind of dive into his face and stop that up with the defense matrix. There it goes, the channel out. He got Tay, but that was all instant trade back onto Rocket as well, who had the Valkyrie. Mega are not done yet. Apudo, though, down on the dive, and they're not actually getting the control of the point here, Mega, for what kills they are getting. Azalea finally getting dropped out of the skies. NZNR proving his worth here. The res is in on Queen. They are really uh, respecting the tank, or valuing the tank, rather, but it hasn't quite paid off for them. So you're not going to give this one up just yet, though. Tay did commit the sound barrier, and now we're still waiting to see if the Rocket Barrage will dead. come in. Mega's still looking for ultimates as well. The Valkyrie came out of Rocket, and so far, though, Xavier, they've managed to keep this point under the control, but for how long? Yeah, I mean, it's... it's I'll, I'll, I'll hand it to them. They've extended their time on that point for quite a while. Azalea needs to not commit this Rocket Barrage, even in getting that kill. They just, yeah, change. they just need to let this one go. Mega in that did actually get to charge up quite a lot of ultimates. Xavier, like I said, they pulled out a lot more time on the point. They've charged up ultimates in their own right. Not out of the woods yet, though. But the trade-up has to be now, when you actually look at how this is, how kind of everything has fallen into place here, Mega did get those final kills, but Xavier are not behind in ultimates. They managed to get enough of their own. Ooh. And saying that, though, it's going to be difficult for them to get the change back in. 
Or though rather the attack back in without their number six player, which the Rez easily brings back. Yeah, they need to keep tabs on NZ and R as well, actually. He's often been the DPS getting a lot of work done in these fights when they've been prioritizing a Pudo, but catch on to Rocket. This is the opening that Xavier need. They even got a Pudo as well, so now it's gotta be all NZ and R. Justice reigns from above. It is that sort of time of day. That's the weather forecast here. No high noon at all. Someone's watch is working. And you were just saying, you got to keep your eyes on the ins and out. We're at the same, sort of in the same vein. You've got to keep your eyes on the THK. He's been yeah. making some big plays of his own, shutting down the Mercy on the other side. Mega quickly yeah. lose this point. Mega only barely just got this point, and yeah. then they have to give it back to Xavier almost straight away. Well, I mean, it feels that way, but they do actually have 50% as well. This is still within the ballpark for them, but they've got to charge up ultimates, and they are lean for time. Few clean fight wins for Xavier here could just push them over the edge, and they get aggressive now. Olivier is probably going to have to commit a self-destruct here. The dead eye to come out zones a chunk of members. Can't quite find the angle on his Azalea, oh, he can at the last second, but not before Azalea has done what he needed to do. They're trying to keep Dreamer pressured as well. Flashbang Tay does not quite go down, and there's the res on Azalea. They couldn't keep Dreamer bottled up, but Apudo does get bottled up by Xavier, who now at 99% is still finding the fight sliding their way. They steered through the worst of it, through the Deadeye, through those flashbangs, and through the dive of Mega, and have answered back with aggression in their own right now tying up Oasis, we're going the full distance. And again, this was fated, right? For so long, we've been wondering who actually is the better tying team. We thought maybe it's Mega, maybe it's Xavier coming into week one. Xavier looked like very big contenders. These, got, these, this looked like a team that was very willing and very able to fight for top positioning. And right now, they can very much still beat Mega. We're on to that final map, and it's already a reflection of Thursday evening. We're already getting the PTS flashbacks. Mega specifically getting those PTSD flashbacks yeah. from their match against Blank. They cannot let it in this way again. But for Xavier, they're about to close out. They look like they want to close out. And I just want to say that's the second time we have seen the power, the power. The Pharah pay off for Xavier, and of course, Gardens is a map where we are going to see it again. If it's working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And what's not working anymore for Mega is this McCree that went off so well on University. At the same time, though, it's also Xavier understanding how to play around the McCree. Apudo's still hitting shots, he's still doing Apudo, but Xavier, they've changed up the way they're playing. They're not shutting down Apudo by necessarily killing him, but they're bottling, up, bottling him up, rather, in small spaces, <laughs> and then cleaning him up. Exactly. Exactly, and again, it's that spam damage out from Azalea plus the follow-up. Xavier know how to play this comp. Yat does trade one back, but again, there is all this control from Xavier. The ground control is starting to slip away, though, as Mega are getting a few picks in here. Xavier staying in a bit too long without converting kills. And now it starts to go sour. They did get the point cap, but much like University, it's very quickly going to go back the way of Mega by the looks of things. It might not, though, because Mega are going to spend some time trying to cap this one over. And if you're Xavier, you don't want it to go over quickly. City Center can give you a lot of ultimate oh, charge Dreamer. if you can just stay on to that cap. But right now, it does not appear that Xavier can stay on the cap. Yeah, Queen dived back in, as did Dreamer. They were looking to get a res on Azalea and kind of keep this one going, but I think that was maybe a mistake because now they've just ended up flooding in one by one as a stagger on Olivier, pushing it up to 26%. May not have been worth it when you look at how much Mega was able to charge off that. And that was just mis mis execution, right? Because the idea is correct. If you're Xavier, you've already kept the point. You do want to go back on the point. Oh. You do want to make sure you can get some extra percentage points, but... Like you said, they kind of came in one by one. They weren't consolidated. They weren't coming in as a team. They paid the price for it, and now they're behind a lot by ultimate. Quick execution, though, because they did get NZ and R out of the picture. He's only just respawning, but Queen's dead. Azalea's got a lot of work to do, and Tay down now as well. They've got to get so much more. Double with the pulse bomb! THK, after soloing out NZ and R to give them the opening, is also looking to give them the close out. Azalea, though, is down, and I don't believe they have res for him. They may do, but not when Dream not is anymore. dead. Yeah, and they're not in control of this, not just yet. They were looking so good, but Loco's been able to hold this one down with his Primal Rage. And now, even as they have to back off, give a bit of space for the self-destruct, I don't know that Xavier can get back on this. They're going to try, though. They're going to keep the fight going. Sound barriers out. Rez on Loco, but they have forced Mega a long ways back. Now the Primal Rage from Queen. That is not the Deadeye that Apudo wanted to be channeling, and I think Xavier may just get this. 
Azalea should be looking to get this because Mega have been on the back foot ever since that double kill from the Pulse Bomb did in fact come on through. Now Mega are still going to get a lot of percentage points here. Mega are still going to threaten in fact to re retain this yeah, point. Yeah, they still if getting they kills. keep getting these kills, they will do that. And Xavier have actually run out of gas. They could not secure enough and now you're seeing why teams going for that soul is so effective. Why Loco using the Primal Rage yet saving everyone with the Transcendence even when there weren't enough Mega members. Oh, as long as more Mega members went dying in that time which they weren't you were going to get that eventual respawn wave for mega coming back in force xavier used all of their ultimates just to force mega back bottle them up but they didn't actually kill them they didn't get rid of them mega just came back in they didn't kill having, enough yeah having never actually got the point over queen instantly dropped the flashbang in the follow-up and a Purdo catching thk it's looking like that's the beginning of the end here for xavier and mega not going to let that last map slide looking like they are going to complete the reverse sweep the gong to ring out and good heavens would you look at the time it's time for mega to secure their second place spot and that was so tough for mega to come on through to collect that win they had to complete a reverse sweep the same reverse sweep that they could not complete against blank that they do now get on saturday evening on week two rather week four of day two so now mega can uh, sort of breathe a sigh of relief but that was a almost a little bit of a yeah. tough loss I mean, for xavier who have been at match point for three maps in a row after taking down Hollywood. I mean, they can, but also can they? Like, congratulations on the win for sure, Mega, but we were talking earlier, you know, this does mean that there is now that extra team here in Xavier who is really going to threaten these teams. I mean, you consider, look, Mega had a close series against Blank that I believe they could, you know, have won if they played again at some other point down the line. I think you can now say the same for Xavier realistically. And yeah, it's a sigh of relief here for Mega. They did overcome Xavier. Xavier are now a new threat to coming into playoffs. And that does mean they threaten Mega, who are also going to be going into playoffs. Mega having gone from just looking like they are really going to make a run for maybe even finals. Now I have to consider that there are at least three other teams. And that's to say nothing of the likes of Hong Kong Attitude and Machi, who are looking to make that exact same run. And now this one, it's going to be... A very well deserved, I think, Val, from Mega as well as they mm -hmm. take that victory. For sure. And I believe their final match as well, that's Mega done and dusted. All of their matches have now been complete. Of course, Mega had two matches this week, and which means we're seeing Yoshimoto count twice mm -hmm. next week. So Mega is might even be the first team completely finished in this release season. Are. Now waiting to see the results of every other team to see where everyone else will fall on the standings. But Mega right now, second place. That's pretty good for them. They don't quite get that number one off a of blank, but second is, uh, is a very good result. Yeah. Xavier even, I think you've said it yourself now as well, Xavier coming in third place, they're looking like a strong unit that, a, that the teams in Group A have to really respect. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's, it's first, second, third right now. That is assuming, of course, Xavier and blank do actually round it out as such. It's first, second, and third, but it's a really close first, second, and third. It, it may as well be, you know, first place tied just about, you know, for the fact that every one of those head-to-heads I think with the exception of Xavier versus Blank, went that full distance all the way up to the very final point of Oasis. Like, that's that's not something we usually see, you know, between the top three teams in any given group. There tends to be at least some point where there's that little bit of extra gap. That's not the case here. And Xavier now, they're going to still have one more match to go. I'm struggling to... I have to think a little bit harder about who exactly that's going to be. We've seen a decent amount of games from... maybe Blank. Uh, no, I think you are. No, they have played blank. I'm pretty sure blank have only got uh, Yoshimoto and Count left, so it's not going to be right. blank. And Yoshimoto and Count, who we're not seeing this week, and they've got two matches left as well. They still have a reasonable space to work with, but those are the teams that are now sort of still in the space where we're going to see where they're going to end up. But on the other side as well, look, I think Hong Kong Attitude, after watching that, if they were watching that, could now really think about what they want to do against Xavier Esports, yeah. who are very close to finishing off their season. And when they do finish off their season, I think you can expect number three. And that's the thing. It, it, it's looking more and more likely with each passing match that that is what Hong Kong Attitude will have to come up against. You know, it's looking like they'll get the second, Xavier will get the third, and they'll meet each other in their first quarter. And you've got to look at, again, that, that stratification across those top three. Hong Kong Attitude being a second-place finisher potentially in their group did not get the same kind of performance against Detonator Korea, who were in first place. They took away a 3-1, which was 
really just not what they were looking for. I also do want to speak to something else, and, and you know, we're talking about the closeness of these one, two, three. We do have to give respect to that head-to-head -head between Blank and Xavier, which was very much the way of Blank. But we also have to look at that and say, that was a couple of weeks ago now. That almost doesn't matter in a way, because look, if the playoff spot is secure, and this is how good Xavier looked coming into playoffs, it doesn't matter if they maybe lost to Blank a couple of weeks ago. What matters is that they could beat them if they played right now. That's the team that's coming into playoffs. That's the team that everyone's got to be afraid of. I think looking on Mega's side of things as well, coming into number two place, they're going up against the number three of a Group A, which right now looks to be probably Marchi. I think Talon Esports still yeah. have a match this evening, so we'll have to see uh, how they no, actually they don't. They have another match next week. Yeah. They've got number five in week five to go. So we'll have to see how they do on that one. But for a team like Mega right now going up against either Marchi or Talon, even though it looks more like Marchi, I think Marchi have done so well that uh, yeah. that's not going to be a very easy one for either side yeah. either. And that's the thing. I, I mean, I don't even know that Machi and Hong Kong Attitude are expressly secure in their particular positions as well. Hong Kong Attitude have clinched their playoff spot, not necessarily the number two spot. So there is even a world where actually they come up against Mega, depending on how things fall. It's not looking super likely, just given the matches that they have uh, coming up across the final week of play here. But on the whole, uh, you know, now that we're starting to see where exactly some of these teams are going to fall, we're also seeing exactly what kind of form they're going to be carrying into playoffs. We can kind of start looking at those theoretical head-to-heads. And uh, I think on the whole, aside from maybe Detonator Korea, there should really be no top four finisher in Group A who can feel safe going into their playoffs matchup. Of course, it should never be the case that you feel safe. But like I said, all three of those teams now have shown their chops you know, you're going to be like the third or second place team coming up against a team that could have just as easily finished first in the other group. That's rough. And we're still looking to see how every other team sort of uh, lands as well. After this, we do have One Shine coming up yeah. against, I believe it was a bang. So One Shine versus a bang. Another team in Group B that's kind of working on this number four spot. So mm -hmm. bang currently hold that number four spot. One Shine are looking to see if they can maybe break through in the final couple of weeks to take it off a bang who are absolutely not secure in that number four spot. And yeah. actually, whoever ends up in number four spot even then have to go on a pretty tough road. Yeah. They're going to go up against Detonated Korea, so it just doesn't get easier for those teams either. Yeah, and that's the thing. The other thing that happens here with this win for Xavier is they are all but secure in that third place spot as well. I think they can technically be bumped down to fourth, but it's not looking super likely. And I have a feeling they may have already won the head-to-head -head against a bang, or that may be their last matchup. But in either, in either situation, at least with how they performed against Mega, that is a series you could expect them to win. They can feel relatively secure, and that means they can feel relatively secure in having dodged Detonator Korea. As uh, every team would like to, I think, do that right now. Detonator Korea themselves only have Bazaar left to go, but enough of that. Let's go straight to a post-match interview with Apudo. And uh, uh, also THK. It's actually uh, a new year for Thailand today. Do you have any words for the fans? Oh, it's a happy birthday. It's a happy birthday for everyone. It's a happy birthday for everyone. And it's a happy birthday for everyone. And it's a happy birthday for everyone. It's a happy birthday for ดูแลตัวเองด้วยนะครับอย่างโซโพสเซเจคอยเลอร์ชิวังเกอเกอเคยอยู่ในเกอเกอเคยอยู่ในเกอเคยอยู่ในเกอเคยอยู่ในเก
？这是有些那个团队合作的问题，就是个人就是沟通的有些问题，所以他。So we made some communication uh, errors. 呃，后呃，最后两赛的时候，他们就先有。And the third or fourth maps after the break, we came back much stronger. 然后ทีมเราเวลาซ้อมก็จะมีปัญหาเวลาซ้อมแต่ว่าเราจะไม่ได้ซ้อมแล้วปล่อยไปครับแล้วถึงแม้ว่าเป็นเวลาซ้อมเราก็จะคุยกันว่าเฮ้ยไฟนี้เจอปัญหาอะไรเราจะคุยกันตลอดแก้ปัญหาเฉพาะหน้าตลอดเวลาครับเขาบอกว่าในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกในการฝึกใน Uh, Oppo 是玩麦卡利玩的非常的亮眼。So you played McCree on Oasis. 对这个地图特别做一个选角呢。Is this a specialty pick for you with the McCree on Oasis? 你他呃，他们挺热 McCree 嘛，然后米，不，อาจจะเป็นเพราะว่าแผนที่หรือเปล่าที่ที่ทำให้เราตัดสินใจเลือก McCree 吧，เพราะเราเล่นดีมาก。จริงๆแล้วมันไม่มีอะไรมากเลยครับแค่เรารู้สึกว่าแผนนี้คือแผนที่น่าจะดีที่สุดสำหรับเราแต่ว่า It has a problem at the top and the top and the top. Why did my performance go up and change? The director said that we are very strong. He 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 said that we are very strong. It actually uh, wasn't super planned, but um, and actually previously uh, the coach had, man had mentioned that maybe you know, McCree wasn't looking so hot, but after I had some energy drinks, I kind of felt a lot more confident, so I wanted to bring it up. Alright, so thank you very much to Oputo for the post-match interview. Of course, congratulating Mega for picking up that win. But with that, now we're done and dusted with our opening match of the evening. When we come back, we've already teased it just ever so slightly, but it's going to be a bang coming up against One Shine, the battle of fourth place. Who's going to make it into the top four? Who will miss out? Find out after this break.